In this section, we'll talk about one of the most popular techniques today in PEFT, which is LoRa. LoRa is a re-parameterization method, which means it leverages low rank representation to minimize the number of trainable parameters. We'll cover a small amount of linear algebra to dissect what low rank representations mean. In fine tuning or any general model training scenario, we update the model weights as we go through forward and also backward paths. The idea behind LoRa is that we can decompose the weight delta metric matrix into two low rank matrices. What difference does it make, you may wonder. Before we can answer that question, let's now briefly revisit linear algebra basics to understand what matrix rank is. Rank refers to the maximum number of linearly independent columns in a matrix. When you have a full rank matrix, it means that the matrix doesn't have any redundant rows or columns that can be expressed based on other combinations or columns of columns. So take a look at the example of below over here. Since column two and column three can be obtained by multiplying column one with a constant, they are not linear and they are not independent. Therefore, the column rank is one. The same applies to the second row as well, because we can get the second row by multiplying the first row by three. So essentially, we're trying to make sure that we represent information in a matrix without any redundancy. So how does weight matrix decomposition work? The observation that inspires Laura is that the rank of the attention weight matrix change is lower than the actual weight delta matrix. So when we do any fine tuning, we can freeze the pre-trained weights and only update the two lower rank weight matrices as demonstrated by WA and also WB over here. But how does this reduce the number of trainable parameters? Let's take a look at, the, at a dummy example. Say that W delta has dimension of 100 times 100, we can decompose that to two smaller matrices, WA with 100 times 2 dimension and WB with a dimension of 2 times 100. When we multiply these two matrices together, they still give us the same shape as 100 times 100, which is the same shape as W delta. And this is really important because we can now then concatenate the results of these matrices with the original pre-trained weights and pass that to the subsequent layer. And this decomposition method dramatically reduces the number of parameters. So the total number of parameters that we see over here is 100 times 2 plus 2 times 100, which is 400. But if we were to get the number of parameters from this original W delta matrix, then we have 10,000 parameters altogether. So this brings us to a 96% of reduction in number of trainable parameters. Researchers found that LoRa matches the performance of fine tuning and sometimes even outperform fine tuning with just 0.02% of the original parameters of GPT-3 over here. The next natural question to ask is, how do we determine the rank of these matrices? We can treat that as a hyperparameter to search over. Generally, rank sizes produce roughly similar validation accuracies, at least for GPT-3. Intuitively speaking though, small r likely won't work for all tasks or data sets because in cases where the downstream tasks are much more different than the original tasks that the base model is trained on. But the researchers have also played with updating different combinations of weight matrices for decomposition, but there were no clear trends to take away from. In a nutshell, LoRa, just like prompt tuning, locks up or freezes the majority of the model weights. You can share or reuse the same foundation model. You can improve training efficiency since you don't have to compute most gradients or optimizer states. It also adds no additional serving latency because we can merge WA and also WB linearly. We can also combine it with other path methods as well. 
However, the existing path library from Hugging Face doesn't allow a combination of path methods to be concurrently used yet. In the lab notebook that we'll be exploring later, you will be asked to apply LoRa to, as a fine-tuning technique. Now let's talk about some of the limitations of LoRa. Even though we could theoretically just swap different weight update matrices as serving time, it is not really straightforward on how to do so using when we have a single mixed task batch. If we want to dynamically choose which combos of weight matrices A and B as serving time, then there's additional serving latency. But there are also, of course, other open research questions as well, such as why do we only decompose W delta? Can we decompose other matrices like the original weight matrix? Or can we reduce the number of parameters even more? And in fact, there is already a newer path technique uh, called IA3 that improves upon LoRa that can reduce even more number of trainable parameters. In the next section, we'll do a general walkthrough of path limitations that apply to most path methods out there.